So who is the doer of those miracles? It's God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Don't mind me. I'm using to my cry. Amen. Galatians 5.16. Galatians 5.16, please. We are walking in the Spirit this week. Amen. <clears throat> we are doing what? We are walking in the Spirit this week. I find out that um, the reasons why you see men are not being proper Christians. Let me use this word. Situation whereby you see <clears throat> people who claim to be Christians or Christ-like, but yet doing other things. I don't want us to start blaming God every time for our problems. Sometimes, in fact, all times, we are the problem. Not God. All times, we are the problem. It's not, the qualification is not pastor. Yes. I have told you time with that number. Two spirits controls this world. One is what? Light. The other one is darkness. Whether you like it or leave it. Power rules the world. Whether you like it or leave it. Power rules the world. Power rules the world. If the president of Nigeria decides to say today it's public holiday, it's public holiday, you dare not open your shop. COVID-19, even the Christians who were told not to do service, true or false? It's power. Okay, now, a, a young girl who has been bedwetting for 21, she just gave testimony, right? 21 years, she said. She has been bedwetting for 21 years. She has been to different churches for solution. She's not a member of the church. With asthma. But they brought her here. We prayed for her. And I told her, drink so, in fact, sufficient water this night. What gave me that confidence to tell somebody who is bedwetting? I said, go and drink water. And she drank the water. And she did not bedwet. You won't understand what bedwetting is. I passed through that experience, so I know what it is. You feel less than a person, most especially when you are with your friends that knows you bedwet. When you wake up in a mix of people and you've bedwetted, you begin to look for solution. Sometimes you carry your good clothes and put on top of the bed that is wet for people not to know. I know how bad it is. Maybe the day you bedwetted, that is the day the man who wants to marry you will come. And he will sit, you will do everything possible to push him to the edge of the bed. He will still stretch his hand to relax. And the hand will just appear there. And you feel wet. And the next thing Satan will tell you, oh boy, smell your hand. Oh. <laughs> While I don't boss. Some you will even, I'm telling you this, pampas will not help you. You wear the pampas to five. Nothing will happen. And later, I thank God I have succeeded today. He will not catch me. And the woman, you just went off and pulled pampas. You just doze off with joke. Sitting down, wham. Amen. So please. I want us to understand that Christianity is not a bread and butter. It's a call to battle. The day you say to somebody, I'm a Christian, he will try you if he is not a Christian. He will want to know. Every man that is evil will test you the day you say, I'm a Christian. He will want to confirm. It's not for anything. He's a Christian. Let me just see if he's a Christian. They won't say anything to you. Me, I'm a Christian. They just want to try. People try people. But I tell you this. There is no solution in the kingdom of darkness. I just want to teach about that today. 
no solution in the kingdom of darkness. Christianity is not how fluent you can talk, how you can teach. Yes, we have teachers, we have evangelists, we have prophets, we have pastors. It is not the title. One can be a prophet by the way he appears or the way he dresses, but not such in heart. Also, one can be a pastor by the way he teaches, the way he behaves, but not such in heart. Growing up, I don't go to a church. Before you see me in a church, except I am seeing manifestation of the power of Holy Ghost. When there's no power, forget it. Because it's a waste of time. The reason why today we cannot pray and have faith in our prayers is because there is no power in the places where we pray. It is not how you speak in tongue. It's how you have the understanding of the tongue that you are speaking. Jesus was working with 12 men. And yet they don't have faith. The strongest among them all asked Jesus a question. All was reminding Jesus of something. And Jesus said, O oh, you of little faith, say, Master, look at the fig tree that thou cursed, it has withered away from the root. Read what Jesus said to him. If they believe when Jesus caused that tree to die, they believe when they are coming, they don't need to tell him. They'll just look at it as it's part of the normal routine. It's a normal routine. If you have a car and you drill the engine oil and you give a key to somebody to drive the car, what will you be expecting? The engine, eh? the engine will knock. Okay, when you ask the person, how is that engine? Are you not the person that comes and say, ah, okay, engine knock. Is it a surprise to you? Because you know that the engine will knock. You see, to those that know their God, they do not exploit great exploit. I've once told you a story of a, an officer who joined the military new. A cadet, he just passed out from the military school. And he was not teaching about Jesus to the people. Every time, Jesus, Jesus. So one of the officers, he's a major, he gets upset. And say, Kai Cadet, come here. And he came. He said, you said with God all things are possible. He said, yes, with Christ all things are possible, sir. So you are telling me all things are possible. He said, say, can you drive? He said, no, sir. He said, take this key. Go and drive that car. Today, if you did not drive that car, I will punish you. The only thing that will make me know that with Christ all things are possible, drive that car. Hi. The boy looked at the key. He was confused. He said, sweet Holy Spirit, teach me how to drive. Can you hear that faith? Sweet Holy Spirit, teach me how to drive. He's not driving in a road. It's just an open field. So he went to the car. He closed his eyes. He said, Lord, manifest your power. Manifest yourself. Prove to them, indeed, you are my God. He puts the key in the car and he starts the car and the car starts. He engages the car and drive. Feel the car move. He was not turning around, turning around, turning around, turning around. Thing was sitting him. He was just, you know, he match break off the car and came down and gave the key to the boss. He saw the boss crying. Ah. He thought maybe because he drove. That's why the man is crying. And he says, sir, why are you crying? I told you with God all things are possible. He said, no, son, come. It is not you drive that is what is shocking me. He said what? He said, do you know that that car has no engine? He went and opened the bonnet and there was no engine in the car. This is the God we are talking about. Can I say this to you? Christianity is not our mode of dressing. It's beyond that. Christianity is not the mode of our dressing. Many at times we want to quantify a good Christian by the way he's dressed. Mm -mm. Some persons are dressing like Mama Jew, but they are in COVID when it's 12, 30 in the night. It's beyond it. It's beyond it. 
beyond it. I want you all to be exercising your rights as Christians. And what is this your right? The right of power. You need to know who you are. That what your pastor can do, you can also do it. It's not strange to me I cast out demons. No, because it's my right. Healing people is not new to me. It's not a news to me. Because it's my right. When you see me recommending anybody for hospital, I have asked, Lord, what do I do? The demon is out, but the skin is damaged. Christians these days don't see Christ to be nothing. You people just go to church, hear the word, and go home and just sleep. It's not bread and butter. If you are a Christian, yes, have you exercised your rights? So many of you pray without expecting anything. When you are, when you are broke, you don't believe you can pray for you to get money. And let me tell you the secret why I don't get broke, even when I give you money. The secret is this. I believe I can cast out devil. So if I can cast out devil, it means, okay, I touch somebody, I shout in fire. Hey, Pastor, I beg. Hey, who did that, yo? Pastor. Ah. So devil can bow. Now that I know. I will now fine tune my spirit eh, to that same way I was using to cast out demon to pray. Lord, I am broke. I need money. I need so so amount. This for this, this for that. In Jesus' name. I will always add for the helpless. Like this for helpless because I don't pray without including you. Those that does not have. And I was telling somebody, I said, why you see pastors are broke? I will tell you the reasons. It is just simple. They believe they are pastors, but they believe the only way to make money is by collecting money from the, from, from the people. That is why they are all broke. If you see a broke pastor, trust me, he is depending on his congregation instead of depending on God. Now let me explain this fact. As a pastor, you are a minister of who? Of God. Who is your boss? God. Who are you working for? God is a king. He has a kingdom. Let it be done on earth as it is. Good. Now, who is the king of Nigeria? The general president of Nigeria? Buhari. Does he have ministers? Who give them money? Who did they write their budget to? He said, I will supply you all your needs according to my riches in heaven. Now, can I say this to you? When you depend on playing congregation wayo, to collect money in the name of God, you will depend on your congregation. Every year, a ministers to the president will write budget and they will submit their budget to the president. And there's what they call as ESCO, which is the executive. They sit together and they approve budgets to different ministries. That is how it happens in heaven. It is a kingdom thing. So any pastors that does not write his budget and submit his budget in the spiritual way, he will get nothing throughout that year. He has no budget, and God can just, just give you money as a minister. No. You have budget. You need to have budget. Amen. Amen. Sometimes we want to make God feel we know more than him. Ah, God, for no let it happen like this now. Yeah, people say that. Oh, God. This kind of nice man, why God let her die? Why God not go let her die? Is there any time? Is there any child that was born and the date he would die in his hand? No. Eh? No. Jesus said I will come like a thief. Know your rights as a Christian. Know your rights. 
as a Christian. And that right, the only way to manifest that right is to walk in spirit. Because we are all walking in flesh. When I mean walk in flesh, I don't mean fornication. Because whenever they are talking of flesh life or fleshy stuff, you people see it as just fornication. A lying tongue is also walking in flesh. Adultery, also fornication, drunkenness, different of them like that. You understand? They are all walking in flesh. You have money, you, support, you refuse to help somebody. You are also walking. Let, let's see Galatians 5.16, please. Fast, we just read fast. Okay, this I say then, walk in the spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusted against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And those are contrary to the one to the other, so that ye could not do the things that ye would. Next. But if ye be led of the spirit, ye are not under the law. What, what, what is the law they are talking about? The law of sin. The law of sin. The only way to avoid it is to walk in spirit. To walk in spirits. I've said the time without number. A pastor will tell you I'm not called to do deliverance. So what are you called to do? You are not called to drive devil. I see some churches. Say you don't do deliverance in this church. Your geo does not do it. It's not part of our rules. If you do it, they sack you. That pastor should be happy he's sacked. He should be happy. In fact, I want you to sack me with pride. That is sucking with pride. Sucking with pride. The odd thing here, my guy, is to drive Satan, nothing else. Our duty as pastors is to help to depopulate the kingdom of darkness. We are at war. These guys, they don't sleep. These guys, they don't have flesh. They are not humans. And that's why the Bible says, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. They don't have flesh, they don't have blood. They are principalities and powers. They are rulers of darkness of this world. They are spiritual wickedness in high, can I, high places. These are demons. So if you don't drive them, then you are not doing nothing. Okay, now, I was praying for her. The demon said they are four inside. Okay, what have you done that they love her so much? Loving her, what have you done for her? He said they made her to bed wet. Can you see this kind of love? If a man tell you I love you and you don't respect him, if I catch you, I'll flog you. I love you, buy you phone. I love you, buy you car. I love you, he's helping you, feeding you, taking care of you. See love. Hey, pastor, I love her. So what have you done because you love her? Hey, she did bed wet. I give her ashma. Is that the love? Yes. I love her. Well, well. Oh. So when a demon said he loves you, it's to kill you. Their own love is wickedness. It's two different kingdoms. If a Satan hates you, then you are safe. But if he loves you, you are finished. They hate us because we are men of and women of fire. They call us winch in the kingdom of darkness also. You don't know. Yes. We are their problem. Yes. This is the gospel. We are their problem. Not the gospel with the enticing words of men's wisdom. But in demonstration of the power of Holy Ghost. The only thing that will make a man believe there is God is when he sees manifestation of devils. Then every man dabbed in his heart, there is no God. All men, once in a while, they dabbed in their heart that there is no God. But when they see Satan being tormented, they saw healing and miracles, then they begin to say to themselves, there is God. God, there is God. 
He's convinced. The only way Jesus was able to convince people he is from God was a demonstration of the power of the Holy Ghost. And that's why a ruler in the church, a pastor, who does not believe in him, dodged and sneaked and met him in the night and said, Master, I know you are from God. But in the public, will he, did he agree? No. Because no man does all these things that you do except God be with him. Sit down. So it means he recognized Jesus is from God. What are the evidence that will make you believe? Evidence of preaching and showing shoes? Evidence of run to the altar, there's miracle. He said, when they see signs, can I say this to you? Many of you here wouldn't have come to this church if not what you are seeing. Right? So, it is the answer that is the conviction. Many of us are tied with religion instead of the way of Christ. Holy. They take communion. Who take communion? No, they talk. Jesus, they take communion. They just... He break it, bless it, take. This is my flesh. Bless it, say, take, drink. This is my blood. But here some people go take communion. They're not going to talk. They are not special people in church. We are all one in the eyes of God. I'm telling you this. What gives me joy in what I am doing today is not preaching to you. But I am happy to see myself being used by the Holy Ghost. That is the only thing that is giving me joy. It's not the church is filled to the beam. If church is filled to the beam, no healing, no deliverance, no blessing, nothing to me. I'm not happy that day. But any day I see Satan being tormented, I see people being healed and blessed, I feel joyful. Amen. That is what gives me joy. And that is what I believe is supposed to be church. Amen. Amen. Let's go back to the scripture, please. He said, now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are those to set you down and look at it yourself. We will read these things together so that we will understand them together. Amen. Amen. Now, what are the things? Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry. Hold on. What is idolatry? What? Now only who worship idol. Who go cut something for everybody? Who consult idol belongs to that category now. Now, then what? Now, the next one is what? You are in church now. You hate a fellow human being like you. They are talking to you now. The next. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Next. Again. The next. Envy. Murder. Drunkenness. Revealing as such like of the which I've told you before, as I have also told you in the time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit we are talking about kingdom, will not inherit the kingdom of God. Because to you, it's only a native doctor that will not go to heaven. Now, hold on. It's okay now, verse 22. Oh, thank you, media. I think you are following me. He said, but the fruit of the Spirit. Look at this one. Oh. Because we don't read the fruit of the other side. Now, let's see the one of God. He said, but the fruit of the Spirit is what? Joy. Joy. Peace. Hold on. Hold on. Lo love. Joy. Peace. The way you know you are a Christian is when you are joyful. When you have peace. Eh? And when you have love. 
Then look at the one Christians are always dodging. Long suffering. This is the part Christians don't like. I'm a Christian, I'm suffering. Long suffering doesn't mean, okay, after long suffering, listen, after, when you give your life to Christ, I am telling you these are things you experience. Peace, joy, love. Then after that one, long suffering will come. But you will overcome them. And you will now what? Gentle. Because the long suffering will humble you. God molds people. God molds people. When a proud man gives his life to Christ, the first thing he enjoys are those things. Then after some time, eh, suffering will come. So you understand? These are these then after, after long suffering, then goodness. Then after goodness, what? Grace. Eh? Grace. Meekness. Temperance. He said against such, there is no law. Amen. Romans 8 verse 1. Romans 8 verse 1. Okay, he said, There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Now let me skip. Let me see verse 14. Verse 14 of this same scripture. Say, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are. So what qualifies you to be a Christian is not title of pastor, bishop. Amen. So please, I want us to start working in spirit. To start walking in spirit. Let us know that we are spirits. And not until you know you are spirit. Trust me, nothing will work. That's why your boss can just wake up in the morning and he doesn't like your face anymore. That's why you are selling and suddenly you just find out nobody's buying from you. Suddenly you just start seeing people, people hating you for no just cost. They will promise you with the intention of helping you when the day comes. Nobody wants to help you again. It is because you are walking in flesh. You believe everything is your power. But when you realize you are a spirit put into a flesh to operate, then you understand. You see what Oibo call vehicles or this petrol. Some people call it vehicle spirit. They believe without the petrol, the vehicle cannot operate. So they see it as the spirit. Something you have to be putting in order for the thing to work. What is the thing you are not putting in your life? Is you are not inviting the Holy Spirit every time in your life. Once in a while, fast. Fasting helps to drive out bad spirits. Fasting and prayer. There's a book in Isaiah that says, Is it not the fact that I have chosen to unwort, unleash what? The bounds of wickedness means the chain of wickedness. To undo the heavy body and to let the captive go, uh, to captive free. Let's stand up on our feet. Please, we should know that we are what? Who are you? You are...